Hello, GenBio. Welcome to week three of the GenBio lab. Today we are talking about protein quantification using a Bradford protein assay. Okay, so basically what that means is that we want to know how much protein we have, how much protein is in solution. And the technique that we use to find this out is called the Bradford protein assay. Okay, so let's move on to our next slide. So the Bradford protein assay, it helps us to determine the concentration of protein that we have in a solution, okay? And the way that it does this is that it uses Kumasi Blue, Brilliant Blue G250 dye, very fancy name for a dye that in its basic form, its original form, has a reddish brown color. You can see that here in the leftmost cuvettes here. So this reddish brown color is the way that it looks um, when it's by itself or mixed with water. Okay. Now, if instead you have water that has protein in it, then when you add that dye, the proteins will be bound, some of the amino acids in the protein will be bound by the dye, which then undergoes a change to a bluer shade, a bluer color. So that's why you're seeing these cuvettes on the right-hand side with a nice vibrant blue color. That indicates that whatever that dye is mixed with in, in that cuvette, it has a lot more protein than the cuvettes that are less blue or more like red brown, okay? So basically, like I said, the way that this works is that when the dye binds amino acids, which of course, as we know, are the binding, are the building blocks of proteins, it, it undergoes a change, okay? And that change is observable by the fact that it changes color, okay? And so the more protein in solution, the more dye will bind that protein and the bluer the solution will be, okay? So we can readily observe this. We can just look at it and see that, hey, those cuvettes on the right, they've got a lot more protein than the cuvettes on the left, but we're not gonna make it that simple, of course. What we wanna do then is put a number to it. Assign the absorbance value to this, um, particular concentration of protein, okay? And we do that using spectrophotometry, okay? So I'm gonna to move to the next slide. We've already done spectrophotometry. Lab one, we used this tool already, so it should be slightly familiar to you. And this slide should look slightly familiar as well. Um, but just as a refresher, spectrophotometry is, allows us to determine which wavelengths of light are absorbed or transmitted by a substance dissolved in a solvent. Okay, so whatever's in your cuvette, which you're gonna put in the spectrophotometer, the amount of light that is absorbed then as it passes through the cuvette will be um, altered by what the solute is that's in there, what the concentration of it is, and whatever wavelength of light that you choose to pass through it. So as you can see in our graphic here, we can isolate a single wavelength of light to pass through our cuvette and then read the absorbance value on the other end by putting it in the spectrophotometer and selecting the wavelength of light that we would like to send through the cuvette. Okay, so we're just gonna use a single wavelength and we're gonna use a single solute and then we can determine the concentration of whatever the solute is in your cuvette, okay? So as I, I'll just show you a little example here, we can, just see here in our cuvette, I've got one solution that has a slightly more blue and a more paler blue. So if you put this one in the spectrophotometer, the absorbance value will be higher than if you put this one in the spectrophotometer, okay? So what you get then, let me move to the next slide, is with an increase in protein concentration, we should see an increase in absorbance values. All right, and we're gonna use that concept to create what's called a standard curve, okay? A standard curve is a way to approximate the concentration of a protein that we don't know, but we have it in solution, okay? And first we have to create the standard curve in order to do that. And the way that we create our standard curve is by making 
increasing uh, dilutions or de decreasing concentrations of a specific protein. The specific protein we're going to use is called bovine serum albumin, and in short, for short, we call it BSA. Okay, that is the protein we're going to use, and we're going to make um, a range of dilutions of it to start with. We're going to create those in the lab. So we're going to have a highly concentrated one, a couple middle, and a least concentrated one. And we're also going to have what's called a blank. A blank will just have water, no protein, and our dye in it so that we can then um, read that as our baseline, like our control, our blank. Okay. All right. So then we have this range of concentrations of our protein, BSA. We're going to put each of those individually into the spectrophotometer, and we're going to read each of their absorbance values. And then we're just going to plot those on a graph, okay? And this is basically what you're looking at here on the slide. So on the x-axis, you've got your protein concentration, your BSA concentration, which you know because you made the different dilutions. So you know what the concentration of each of those is. And then when you read them in the spectrophotometer, you will get an absorbance value and you will plot those values on your y-axis, okay? So you're gonna make a graph, okay, where concentration of protein is against its absorbance value for each. So each of these little diamonds, little blue diamonds here on the graph is representing one concentration of BSA and its absorbance value, okay? All right, and then to make this uh, easier, what we do is we add a curve, a slope, slope equation to our graph, okay? And the slope equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, right? Where y is your absorbance uh, value and x is your protein concentration. Now, the computer will create that slope equation for you, but then you will use that equation to determine the concentration of a different protein, not BSA. So I will give you a protein in solution in the lab. You don't know the concentration, but you want to find out what the concentration is. So you're going to put that in the spectrophotometer and get the absorbance value. And once you have the absorbance value, like I said, you can plug that in to as y, and if you forget, just look at your graph. Remember the absorbance values are on the y-axis. Plug in the absorbance value that you get out as y, and then you will solve for x. Okay, and x then will be your protein concentration. Okay, and I'll, as always, don't forget your units. Okay, and then, so this is a really handy tool. If I give you a protein in solution, you can find out the concentration of it, and then you can use that in further experiments or whatever. So that's exactly what we're doing today. So just to sum up, today's Bradford protein assay actually rehashes several of the tools and techniques we've already learned and reinforces those concepts. And then we also are adding to our repertoire of tools that we can use in the lab. So we're gonna reinforce how to make dilutions because you will be given one concentration of BSA, a bovine serum albumin, and you're gonna make decrease in concentrations of that. So you're gonna reinforce how you uh, are able to make dilutions. You're gonna reinforce how to use the spectrophotometer. Okay, like I said, we're gonna isolate the wavelength. We're gonna use a wavelength of 595 nanometers and we are going to then spec all those concentrations of BSA that you made okay, and of course a blank as well and then we're going to generate a standard curve which should look something like this okay in our, in our on our slide here by plotting your concentrations of BSA against their absorbance values okay, and adding your slope equation and then I will give you in lab a protein in solution there's lots of these available, like I said, milk, uh, chicken broth, uh, protein shake, all of these things um, are commercially available and easy to use in this experiment. So what you're gonna do then is you're going to first, you're probably going to have to dilute the protein that I give you. So for instance, um, milk, uh, especially protein shake, has a very high protein concentration. So we need to dilute it down to make it usable in this assay. But 
after you do that, then you're going to put it in the spectrophotometer, get the absorbance value, and plug that in for Y and solve for X, which will be the concentration of protein in that solution. Okay. Um, and then we want to look at the food label and see how your reading compares to what the manufacturer says the protein should be. Hopefully they'll be pretty close. Rarely are they exactly what the label says, but that could be some human error. Um, but hopefully they'll be close. And then uh, the last thing I included here on the slide is just that, like I said, you probably will have to dilute the protein that I gave you before using it in this experiment. So you have to make sure you multiply back up by the dilution factor if you want to compare to the food label. You want to make sure you're comparing the full strength protein uh, to what it says on the label, not the diluted uh, concentration that you created. Okay. So that's it for this week. So pretty simple. We're doing a lot of, um, we're using a lot of techniques that we've already learned, which I think is great. We're going to reinforce how to do those. And we're learning a Bradford protein assay, which is very instrumental um, in a biology lab. Okay. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, as always, you can email me at cfry at lvc.edu. Um, stay a little bit after class or ask questions in lab or visit me in office hours. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.